Ryan, welcome to our story of resilience video series. It's good to see you. Um, before we talk about um, ACES and the future and the conference that's coming up as well, tell us about your story. Uh, well, I guess my story um, it probably starts very early on in my childhood. So um, my, my childhood was sort of like the narrative very early on was, was marked by um, adult addiction around me. Um, one of my parents was an alcoholic and, and that led to the, the breakup in my family. It led to me being taken into the, the state care system. I had state intervention in my life uh, the first time around about five, um, where I was initially looked after at home with social work involvement and then I was taken into kinship care and then back and forward and back and forward and um, eventually uh, my mum passed away um, as a result of her addiction uh, when I was about six years old and I was left into the care of my dad from that and he sort of I had to rebuild our lives there as a single parent from there. Stories of resilience is what the what the video series is about. How how do you build resilience while you're going through all that at such an, an early age? Well, that's something that people ask me quite often and I think that something that's key for me is there's been a number of key positive relationships in my life which have helped me to develop self belief and and to and to, to to move on in progress the first of which is my dad um i remember when we first moved into a flat together um after i was discharged from the care system and i remember we moved in and we literally the the furniture i remember having in this flat was basically a mattress on the living room floor and we had a portable tv which sat on top of a cardboard box and i remember quite clearly sitting next to my dad um and he sort of said to me this is a chance for a fresh start for us this is a chance for us to to build our lives from there and and from that point he sort of always tried to convince me that i could do anything or be anything that i wanted to be and i could overcome what we'd had to go through and his is his my relationship with him is is one of a series of of relationships which have really benefited me um, I guess that we lived in a, a, a heavily deprived community. We, we grew up, I grew up in Easter House in the east end of Glasgow. And having gone through that at an early age, I was then surrounded by poverty. I then went to a school which was extremely low performing in terms of league tables. I think a league table recently said that it was the second worst performing school in Scotland, which I don't think is a helpful thing to put in into the media. To be honest, I don't think that's very encouraging for the people who are there currently. Um, but I became disengaged from education. Um, I like a lot of the people around about me. And I left school at 16 with very little prospects. And I ended up just working for a firm in Glasgow. And I worked under this woman called Fiona, who was extremely supportive. And that's the second main positive relationship in my life. She intervened in my life and gave me unconditional support at a time when no authority figure other than my dad um, had really believed in me before and that was really powerful for me because not only did she give me unconditional support but she also held me account when when I did things wrong and she convinced that company to pay for me to get some qualifications and I used those to, to get into uh, the law school at University of Strathclyde and four years later managed to, to graduate with a law degree and I, I honestly put my relationship with Fiona um, as, as the, the single biggest factor in me being able to overcome that. And when when did you hear the term ACEs? I guess when I first started to become aware of it uh, through social media. So it's a it's, it seems to me as a grassroots driven movement, and social media started to sort of a filter through into the mainstream media, and people started to talk about it. Is this is this recent? I, mean, what, I would say a couple I, of years ago. I would say probably a year and a half ago or something. Okay. Um, maybe just before you had the first conference, I started to become aware of it. And I started to look into it a little bit more. And I think I have to say that initially I was quite sceptical because growing up in a deprived community, we had lots of initiatives that were sort of aimed at fixing one problem or the other. So we'll have, we had like an initiative aimed at drugs, an initiative aimed at uh, poverty, an initiative aimed at gangs or violence or whatever. And it always seemed to us, or certainly seemed to me, that when the organisations that were pushing these initiatives when the funding dried up, these organisations seemed to disappear and the community was just left to pick up the pieces. And I think initially when I became aware of the ACES movement and, and, and I didn't know much about it, I was sceptical as to whether this would just be the latest thing, whether this could just be another label for people like me, you know, a score. But actually when I started to look more into it, I started to, to follow people on Twitter like James Doherty, for example, like Suzanne, um, for example, and... 
I watched the Nadine Buck Harris TED Talk and then I watched the documentary and and to me that was that was quite it was like an epiphany moment to think wow I'd never thought about that before I'd never thought about myself before and those and that sort of a trauma informed lens and starting to look at my own behaviours and the behaviours of people round about me at school and um, when I was growing up and in a completely different light and I think that's been one of the most effective things and I think the fact that it's a grassroots driven movement has, is a big part of that because I think that helps people like me overcome initial um, scepticism. I think it'd be fair to say as well that you're a massively important part of the ACES movement in Scotland as well having lived experience because I would imagine that um, that you have um, you have some very impactful well, you do a lot of talks around the country, I believe, and you do an awful lot on social media. But I, I imagine that almost peer to peer, you can be very impactful in your messaging. Absolutely, and I think that that's a big thing for me as well. When I saw other people who had similar backgrounds to me who were already involved in it, that allowed me to to be comfortable and get involved, because I don't think f it, like the professional experience is, is a massive part of it, and that's that's obviously a value um, a valued part of it. But that emotional intelligence that comes with lived experience where you can speak to people on their level, there is there is nothing um, that equals that in terms of, of being able to get people on board. And for me, that was a big factor when I saw other people like James Doherty or Darren McGarvey, people who I really understood and respected and who I knew had experienced similar things to me growing up. When they started to speak about it in those terms, that, that, was, a, that was a big factor for me. And your understanding of ACEs, did, did that it did the penny drop about relationships at that point when you read about ACEs and you were following people on social media? So adverse childhood experiences, did you then go, oh right, okay, that's relationships, that's my father, that's the lady that helped me at work? Did it, or, or were you aware of the power and the importance of relationships before your understanding of ACEs came around? Well, absolutely. I think I, I had the two things sort of in separate camps initially. And then I thought, well, when people ask me about how I was able to, able to overcome adversity, I, I talk about a series of relationships mostly. Um, there's obviously inherent resilience within me, um, but, the, but none of that would have come to fruition if it hadn't been for people who gave me unconditional support at key points in my life. And then I started to look into the ACEs movement and what a lot of the proponents of the ACEs movement are, are talking about is positive relationships, whether that be a positive relationship with a teacher or whether that be with a grandparent, a parent or whatever. And... I just sort of um, mud married the two together eventually and thought, well, no, this is exactly, this is more or less what I've been talking about, only I haven't been looking at things through a trauma-informed lens. I was talking about things mostly within the narrative of poverty and, and its consequences, and I've always sort of a politically and, and, and morally believed that poverty is the, the source of most of our social issues, be that crime, be that the breakup of families, be that people going into care. Most of these things can be traced back to poverty, but that also goes hand in hand with with trauma and trauma and early age. And actually these things, they don't cancel each other out. They actually work hand in hand. And if you look at people through a trauma informed lens, um, it just brings that extra bit of compassion, I find. And and also for me as somebody who, who has experienced adverse childhood experiences, I think I did the quiz when it initially um, was, was being shared on social media and I got, um, I think it was eight of, of the 10 experiences. I think that that bought into some of my initial scepticism because I thought, okay, well, that's that's 10 traumatic experiences, but it doesn't include, you know, experience of poverty. It doesn't really include moving, um, having to move several times. It doesn't include if, for example, you went into residential care at an early age and all of those, you know, it was the state that neglected you. It was the state that abused you. It was the state that restrained you. If you took that, quiz and you took it to the letter then you might score quite low on it but actually when I learned more about the movement I actually learned that it's actually more about trauma as a wider concept and it's actually a misunderstanding on the part of a lot of people that it just focuses on 10 questions because that's not been my experience of it. And what does a what does an ace aware nation look like through your eyes? For me I think um, it has the potential to cause a real transformational change in Scotland because I think that as a, as a world, a Western world, we really lack compassion um, and, and it's key areas like the NHS, like addiction services, like criminal justice, for example. And I think that if this movement can build 
and now that it's got Scottish Government backing and Scottish Government recognition, that's great. But what it has to do is it has to keep lived experience at its heart because that has been that's been the beauty of this movement. It has been driven by a grassroots movement. And as lo as soon as it becomes another thing that's happening to people and not involving them, I think that's where it might die away. But as long as it keeps lived experience at its heart and it keeps being driven from the bottom up, it has the it has the chance to, to really transform transform so many areas of Scot of of Scottish policy, of 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 society, we are you know we're not necessarily treating people with compassion, such as homelessness or criminal justice, prisons, um, drug services, like I've mentioned before. And um, and with your understanding of Aces, how is that going to transpose into your professional life going forward? Because you you're going into law. Yeah, yeah. I began training as a solicitor in September. Um, I think that one of my strengths um, that's, that's helped me get to where I am and um, before I even knew anything about ACEs was emotional intelligence that's how I used to articulate it I can I can relate to people I can understand people and I think that what the ACEs um, or a trot becoming an ACE aware nation does is that that gives a framework through which anybody can relate to people can think can see people differently you know that idea of what what happened to you as opposed to what's wrong with you I think if I were to be going through school today rather than you know uh, to, to it, 12 years ago um, I think I would have probably been treated differently from by but you know I, I, I was a, sort of a class clown and I was treated as, as, as someone who was bad as a result of that and I think now teachers would be saying where is that behaviour coming from what has happened and how can we get through that together and 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 treat people with, with more compassion. It was interesting, you mentioned early on in the interview about a certain amount of cynicism or scepticism about about ACEs. Um, what's your approach now when you're talking to people who might be like-minded when they when they hear about ACEs and you're talking to them? What approach do you take? How do you, how do you, uh, how do you translate ACEs to them? Well, there's a couple of there's a couple of ways I normally do it. The first thing I, I do is I, I I explain how ACEs look, m helped me look at myself differently. So that idea of a trauma informed lens is a great image, and when I looked at myself through that, that 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 allowed me to reflect upon a lot of the stuff that I'd been through, a lot of past relationships, past behaviours, and that self realization and self reflection led to self-regulation. We are now, I'm very careful about, you know, my relationship with things like alcohol, very careful my relationship with things like sleep, um, you know, even social media, because I now understand that the experiences that I've had in the past have had an inherent impact on the, my biology and who I am. Um, and there's, there's nothing I can do about the past, but what I can do is manage myself and manage the future. When you start to talk to people about that, well, I don't think anybody really disputes the fact that your past experiences have an impact upon you and then when you start to talk to them about you know this the science behind that although i'm not an i'm not a, an expert in that or show them some of the videos for example dr buck harris's video it's it's you can see a powerful moment when most people with us and a moment of realization and i think that's the self-reflection where they're going oh that that's that explains a lot there's also the there's also a tendency to take a very narrow view of it where people will focus on some of the stuff that's on social media, which if you're not initiated into what ACEs is about, some of the stuff on social media might come across as a bit like we've found a silver bullet or a bit evangelical even or a bit narrow in terms of focusing on 10 questions. That's one of the main criticisms that I've come across is that 10 questions, they don't cover, like I said earlier, poverty, LGBT issues, they don't cover bullying, they don't cover you know, other traumatic events. Um, and that initially was, was a, a source of scepticism for myself. But the more you learn about it, the more, well, what people are doing is using this study to illustrate that trauma has an impact. They're not actually focusing on those, te those 10 specific traumas. What they're focusing on is trauma and its impact on people's behaviour and their impact on their health and mental health outcomes. When you explain that to people, it's, it's hard to deny that this is a positive thing because this awareness can lead to change. It seems that Scotland has adopted relationships really at the, at the heart of this um i suppose my final question for you ryan is what what are your hopes for the future for for scotland maybe the rest of the uk as far as as far as being an ace aware nation is concerned you've given me what you think it looks like but what, what are your what are your hopes well i i just hope that it it realizes that potential 
to to bring about real transformational change, to bring about a, a change in the way that we see people who are suffering from addiction, the way that we see people who are living in poverty. Um, that might have to come with political change. It almost in, um, inherently will. Um, but I think that 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 awareness of becoming an ace aware nation can reach into almost every aspect of Scottish public and civil life and and bring about real change and if it introduces more compassionately and a society the way services are delivered then that can all be a good thing ryan an inspirational story thank you for sharing it thank you thank you